NVIDIA is bringing back a piece of tech that I thought was long dead. Samsung confirms that it can disable your TV remotely. Shout out to South Africa. And Razer Synapse is malware. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast, okay? And let's start off with us enjoying a little bit of revival from NVIDIA on a graphics card line that I thought was completely gone. This is the blower style cooler of the RTX 3090 and 30. The 80 are now remarkably coming back in stock, which I know doesn't sound admittedly all that exciting, but this was one of the mysteries of the RTX 30 series launch because Nvidia just kind of killed them all off without saying anything to anybody. And the suspicion at the time was because servers and people who were using them in professional capacities were buying those instead of quadros and Nvidia not wanting to make less money decided to just get rid of the entire market segment to begin with, which is a bummer because those were the perfect GPUs to put in like mini ITX systems because they were dual slots in some instances and you could only really do that with blower style coolers because otherwise you need triple slots or 2.7 slots in order to adequately cool these behemoths that chug on the power. So these specific RTX 3080 and 3090s from Galax that are coming out are their turbo edition, but the caveat here is that they're only going to be sold in China and not to the rest of the world. So Nvidia still likely having that stranglehold of you will not take money away from us professionals. We need that extra couple thousand dollars that we're going to earn from you. You better give it to us, all right? Or well, so we can't sell this to everybody. You're ruining the party, professionals, people and servers. You're making it so I can't build my mini ITX system that has a blower style 3090. Thanks a lot. Sorry, that was a little aggressive for breakfast, but let's wake you up a little bit by talking about today's video sponsor for Sigmatic. This is the coffee that I drink every single morning, my friends, with my breakfast, and I think that you should give it a try too. It gives me the most energy of any coffee I've ever tried. The taste is really good, and it's got a secret ingredient, lion's mane mushrooms, my friends, culinary mushrooms, okay? Not those types of mushrooms, I promise you. It's not those types of mushrooms, even though it may appear like hot news is made by those types of mushrooms, it's not. Okay, it's just the good stuff that you're supposed to be ingesting. Doesn't taste like mushrooms at all, right? It just tastes like normal coffee. And we actually did a previous sponsor spot where I actually used cold brew coffee. And guess what coffee was in there? Four Sigmatic. I love it so much that they don't even send this to me for free. I have to buy it, even though they're sponsoring us. And I absolutely will be willing to do that. It's the only coffee I drink. I think you should check it out for your hot news breakfast. Link will be in the video description. Use coupon code UFDTech to save 10% off your order with them. Big thanks to Four Sigmatic for sponsoring this episode of Hot News. A big thanks to South Africa for revealing something that kind of could have been assumed, which is that the Internet of Things devices connected smart devices that are out there are likely being tracked by the companies that made them. They're pinging home every so often, but because of a lot of looting and rioting that happened in South Africa least recently due to political unrest, uh, Samsung's confirming that they're disabling those TVs remotely as soon as they connect to the Internet. This is part of their ability to mitigate all of this and keeping with their values to leverage the power of technology to resolve societal challenges. We will continuously develop and expand strategic products in our consumer electronics division with defense, grade security, purpose built, and innovative and intuitive business tools designed for the new world. I kind of get it right. Like we accept this and things like smartphones, like we can assume that if an iPhone is lost, it will be remotely locked by, you know, the person who owns it or by Apple. So seeing Samsung do this, but it's kind of weird and just just odd that it's happening in television, something that you wouldn't assume could have that happen. However, in the instance where it is stolen, being able to do this makes it so that they're less likely to be stolen. And TVs are some of the most high valued goods that people just have readily lying around in their households to be stolen by thieves. So having some sort of protection like this is good. I just inherently don't like it. And maybe that's something I need to get over as we're entering into the new age. I want to hear from you. What do you think about Samsung being able to lock down your TV if it does get stolen. They already do this with their smartphones. I want to hear from you down below in the comments. But the only thing that kind of trips me up about this is what happens when Samsung partners with SABC when you don't pay your TV license. And so you're that hundred rand a year or whatever the heck it is, right? You don't pay that. And then they just shut down your TV and you can't use it until you pay your TV license. That's the future that I'm worried about. What the heck? I should be worried about my present.
apparently. I'm worried about the future where this feature gets used for things that are controlled by the government and not necessarily something that's uh, more related to theft or anything like that. Is there a way to avoid slippery slopes? Do you have to wear like shoes with spikes in them? Cleats? Is that is that what, how we avoid these slippery slopes? Again, let me know your thoughts on all of that down below in the comments. I'm going to let you know my thoughts on crypto stonks. And by that, I mean, I won't because I just look at the prices. I, this is not financial advice. This is not investment advice. In fact, I, I'm just a, a youtuber so just we're gonna read numbers together that's what this segment is bitcoin down 1.86 percent to be at 48241 ethereum down 2.87 percent to be at 3208 and dogecoin down 6.25 percent to be at roughly under 30 cents right now which all of that's a little red in the crypto market let's talk about the meme stonks oh my gosh they had a wild day gamestop up 27 and a half percent in a single day to close at 210 it closed at like 180 something yesterday Yesterday. That's insane. That is a massive gain in just a single day, regardless of any stock that it is. AMC also having a Jimondo day, up 20.3% to close at 44.26, up 4.38% in after hours. GameStop's up half a percent in after hours. They're just going to the moon, my friends. Are we? Is this the? Is this the week it happens? Right? Is this leading up to September 1st? Is this when we see GameStop go to eight, ten, twenty-five thousand dollars a share? Again guy who's reading numbers with you. I don't know. But speaking of memes, let's talk about Elon Musk and Tesla's full self-driving technology. Elon Musk tweeting out that he is not impressed with the current full self-driving beta 9.2 that's out there. It's not great IMO, but the autopilot AI team is rallying to improve as fast as possible. Gee, Elon, where have we heard that before? Oh, basically every single time you've promised us a feature update for full self-driving, saying that they're trying to have a single stack for both highway and city streets, but it requires a massive neural net retraining. Andy, you've said this every single time. Back in 2016, he said that full self-driving autonomous vehicles should be just a couple years away. It should be a solved problem within two years. And every single time, every single time it gets delayed, he says, it was a harder problem than we thought it was to solve. That's what everybody told you from the beginning. Like saying we hope to do it and that we think we can, but saying it's basically a solved problem and then saying, oh, the button to download full self-driving beta for all of your Tesla owners is just two weeks away. Meanwhile, you said that back in March, I'm waiting here in August. I still don't have it for my charity stream, which I, the whole plan was doing it full self-drive anyways. This is basically the announcement that the next UFD charity stream is going to be taking place October 6th through 8th is the tentative date right now. And as you heard me rant a little bit, it involves Tesla's and full self-driving. I'll keep you posted as we get closer to that date. And Mazda is not posted on the fact that you can't sell a garbage EV for $33,000 in this day and age. I don't know where they're launching the first EV from, but the MX-30 uh, only has 100 miles of range and a 35.5 kilowatt hour battery, which is just like Volkswagen e-golf amounts of range. And it's starting at $33,000. That's crazy. That's too much. I'd rather buy a Chevy Bolt. It doesn't look too bad. It's like a normal mid-range crossover with like weird suicide doors that it has right there. Mazda, you can't launch this thing for $34,000. $24,000? I could swallow that pill. $34,000, you are out of your dang minds. Corsair might be out of their minds. I don't know. That's not a good segue. They're announcing their Vengeance RGB RT. DDR4 modules, which as you can see here, have a little bit of a different design coming in in a V shape with a different heat spreader to make it look a little different. I like the design on this. The black and white is actually kind of nice as well, depending on the build that you're going to put it into. What do you think of the Vengeance RT? Let me know down in the comments. And Microsoft's going to be releasing xCloud to their Xbox consoles this holiday season. So this is going to allow Xbox One, One S and One X owners to be able to play Series X and S titles at the resolution frame rate and quality details that they're meant to be played at just over the internet, so it's going to be streamed. This is a good thing to see. It makes it so that people who don't have the money to upgrade to a new console only have to pay a subscription fee, and then they're able to enjoy the games in the quality that they're supposed to, except for they would need the internet in order to make that happen. We'll see how that how that fully plays out and whether or not Microsoft's bet on this cloud streaming thing is the right one for them. And TikTok's betting that you want to buy stuff in app, which is why they're partnering with Shopify to create in app merchant storefronts where you can buy stuff directly in the app and you never have to leave TikTok ever. All right. The algorithm that's so addictive that they have to constantly pop a thing up that says, hey, 
You've been scrolling for way too long. Get off your butt, go do something with your life, and then come back to TikTok when you feel that depressive sadness, loneliness creeping up again. We'll be here for you. But right now, just, you know, get rid of the blood clots in your legs. And this next article is something that I don't normally think that I would do, which is praise EA for doing something appropriate. And that is they're opening their patents of accessibility technology to any game developer who actually wants to use it, saying that they won't file infringement lawsuits against people or companies for using the tech that falls under patents listed in this pledge. So this applies to things like the ping system that's used in Apex Legends. This is great for people who can actually use voice chat as well as things like their color blindness and low vision modes that they have implemented in Madden games. And then things like personalized sound technology for different levels of hearing, as well as different brightness and contrast levels and everything that's going on there. So I just kudos to EA for doing something that's good for like accessibility, good for game developers, good for the community in general. I, the fact that it's a pledge and not something that they're like, I don't know, maybe legally doing kind of makes me a little skeptical that they might change tune depending on what executive comes in and is just like, hey, could we make money off of this? Oh yeah, we can. All right, screw the disabled people. We're gonna make them pay for that colorblind tech. While we talked about EA doing something good, let's balance it out by talking about Razer doing something bad, which is if you want administrator access on any Windows PC, just plug in a Razer mouse. It's that simple because Razer Synapse software automatically installs through Windows and makes it so that you can get elevated administrator privileges, which uh, somebody posted this over on Twitter because they're trying to contact Razer about it, trying to get it fixed. Razer's not doing anything about it, so they, uh, they're they showing you how you can get administrator access by the friggin' malware that is Razer Synapse. It's absolutely awful. Number one, the software sucks. Number two, the fact that it automatically installs was always a pain in my butt. And now number three, to see that it actually can give administrator access is just like, yeah, this is the icing on the crap cake that is Razer software. Get rid of your Razer software products, my friends. Now, speaking of software, Intel is indicating that they're gonna have overclocking software available for their Arc GPUs upon launch, which is a good thing. Uh, I, more, I'm hoping that they're stable drivers because the DG1 doesn't even have that at this point. So hopefully the Alchemist GPU does have it so that you know your games don't crash, you can run DX12, that'd be great. Uh, the fact that I can overclock it for more instability, I guess is like par for the course and just the general theme of my experience with Intel GPUs, but maybe, maybe it'll be different at the time also confirming that their Zest technology, XESS super sampling, does not require per game training, just like Nvidia's original DLSS did. Instead, it's just super sampling that you can copy and share across different video games and make it so that it can use the AI cores in order to do the upsampling, but doesn't necessarily need a machine learning mega supercomputer to do all of that for you. And a mega learning supercomputer should help us to figure out what AMD was thinking when they didn't give us support for Ryzen 5000 on X370 motherboards, specifically the Crosshair 6 Hero. Look at this beast of a motherboard that initially launched with Ryzen, all right? This thing should be able to support Ryzen 5000. There's no good reason it can't besides AMD just not wanting it to, all right? And now we're finding that there's some BIOSes out there for ASRock motherboards, specifically the ASRock B450 Pro 4R 2.0. If you install that on the Crosshair 6 Hero, you can do Ryzen 5000 support as well as smart ass memory, which is good because you're getting features that AMD doesn't want you to have. Will this BIOS be pulled at some point? AMD's done that in the past. For everybody who thinks AMD is a wholesome company. They do crap that's anti-consumer sometimes. This whole BIOS nonsense is one of them. They've forced companies to pull BIOSes off their website when they support a PCI Express 4.0, even though they should have because the motherboard could support it, but AMD didn't want you to do that so that you would actually buy the new motherboards like the X570 B550, so they made them pull them down. So AMD does anti-consumer things from time to time. So I would argue that BIOS support is probably uh, chief among them at this point. And chief among my happiness, which for as much as I can rant against AMD, is the fact that we're going to get integrated GPUs in all of their CPUs. You check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where I talked about that. I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends. Why don't you go buy some Four Sigmatic? Link in the video description. Coupon code UFDTech. I'll see you tomorrow for Hot News, my friends. Cheers. <laughs>